Hey, Cubic. A crash this morning. The mask of Messiah. Here to talk to you about dreams. You see, I'd also like to talk to you about when I'm at university and their expulsion of me. But before I do, I figure I might as well get into the subject of dreams because, after all, it was mostly dreams that I spoke to the students about when they interviewed me and made, wrote the article, and which got all the attention and everything started about me, which then got the school to eventually expel me for some odd reason, like slandering me over me staring at students who were staring at me and writing articles. Okay, well, another reason why dreams are something I want to talk to you first about is because some of those dreams have also given me some reassurance that these students in Willamette University are going to have to face the music pretty soon. So, when I do talk about these dreams, I want to talk about them in a couple of different videos. Um, I'll talk to you first a little bit about my young childhood experiences and my, my mom and my, my stepdad and how, like and those experiences, but I'll also talk to you about dreams that have come to pass already and some that seem like they're soon to be coming to pass. So I'll, I'll kind of do like a past and a future video. But in, for this video, I first like to start off talking about how my, my mother, when, when I was younger, she would always talk to me about how she had a vision of her mom after she died. And I came to her in a vision uh, before I was born. And so that always stuck with me. It was something that, you know, as a child, like she, she constantly reminded me of these kinds of things. And there was one time actually when I was young, uh, I think like five or so, really young, um, I had this like nightmare. So I think it was like feverish. I might've been, I had like a sickness or something, but I was like tossing and turning and like this sort of waking nightmare where I was like half in and out of it. And and it, all I could really describe this this dream nightmare vision as was it felt like all of the negative emotions that anyone anywhere would ever end up feeling about me. And apparently there's a lot because it was overwhelming. I mean, there's so many different things that I was feeling and all these different like, like it was like shapes and shadows, almost like I was like sensing the presence of all these people like really confused and angry about what I was doing. And I was so upset, I went to my mom and I, and I asked her, you know, what do I do? And she being very religious and very into Jesus, told me to, to pray to Jesus and to ask to have these things taken away. And so I did and they went away. I mean, I've never had a nightmare since, since I was a five year old. Uh, and so I, I was really very passionate about these spiritual things. Uh, being a Mormon was a was a badge of honor for me as I grew up. Um, you know, I, I I was someone who stood out because I didn't drink or smoke until I got into my late teens, and so or any of those kinds of things. You know, I was I wasn't into dating until I got a little older. I mean, I had a few girlfriends here and there, but I never really got heavy into it like a lot of my friends did, and so. My faith was really strong and I had a lot of belief that I was supposed to do many great things in this world because I was told I would by my parents and by my church leaders. I had patriarchal blessing that told me all these kinds of things. I had an astrologer who told me all these things when I was 16 too about my chart. And so it it made me realize that I had a lot of potential. I mean, my grandfather was head of Tammany Hall. He was friends with presidents and called for the fourth term of FDR back in the day in the New York Times. So I had a lot of examples of what I could potentially do and be like with, with biblical stuff, talking about Jesus and trying to be like him. I literally wanted to be like Jesus. And so once that, I had that dream and had to pray and had it all changed this whole nightmare situation, I really like that's, it was like I was becoming in my mind someone who could be that kind of person. Because that's when I was at college reading level in second grade, you know, and before that I was learning the teachings, you know, people were telling me before I could read it, you know, about this guy. And I, I believe very literally. And now I don't believe so literally in, in the Judeo-Christian deity, but I, I believe in the concepts of faith. I believe in, in the sense of, of it having power for us, if we believe something, we can manifest things. I've seen, I've seen our ability to do things, even just with the placebo effect. You know, we have the ability to manifest with our minds some pretty powerful things, including dreams. 
And, and, and the dreams, most of them that I've had, have, have had some like, really strong deja vu feeling, especially the ones that have come true and the ones that seem likely to be coming true soon. And so um, having had my mom raise me this way and having me had this kind of experience, I, I you know, when, when my stepdad was dying of cancer uh, in my early 20s, uh, I, it was a dream that I'd had recently right before he died um, and I had this notion to talk to him about it, like it was two days before he ended up dying. Um, but I felt really compelled to talk to him about it because I felt like it was a really important message I needed to share with him, uh, about, you know, what he needed to, in order to pass peacefully. And so, um, in this dream, he and my cousin's husband, well, ex-husband now, I mean, and she's passed too. I haven't, I don't know what happened to her, but. My cousin Megan and her kids were all there at like a little picnic in front of this model home. And the, and I step on a bee and I tell my cousin that all of her kids are loved by Jesus, but one is for some reason was like extra special in his eyes. And so I go into the model home and I see my dad and Stan, her, her ex-husband, um, talking about the model home that they're standing in, but there's, as a representation, they have a, a smaller miniature model in front of them and they're talking about all these great features. And in the dream, I, I recognize the home and I, and I see it as one that in real life, I've had multiple reoccurring dreams of years before this dream about the model home. And so I, I recognize um, the home as they're talking about it, and I and I try to warn them like, oh, this is this. There's something about the way this this home is connected to like a, a warehouse, and there's like a fault between the connection between the the two buildings, and the warehouse has got all these stairs and doors everywhere, and there's some issue there. And and so in the dream, they're like laughing me off, and and, and I can't figure out what exactly is wrong. But when I come, at, you know, to my dad and, and uh, two days before he dies, I, at that night I realized it was about pride. It was about the pride that is so easily developed uh, when you have to leave the home and go out into the working world and, and provide for your family. And, and, and what that had done for my stepdad was it caused him to, to be great at serving others, but he hated to be served. Like it was almost like a, a painful thing to have someone else serve him, like, he, you know, and so I, I told him about how this was something that, you know, it was the only thing that I could think of that he really should really address if he wanted to be ready to move on. And, and, he, and that night was the first time that he couldn't physically get up into bed. So I had to actually lift him in after having this conversation with him in, into bed before he passed a couple nights later. And so I also had a dream a couple of uh, days after he died. But I'll get more into that in some of these other videos coming up here uh, that I'll be doing. But I wanted to, to just put this first primer video out there to invite any of y'all to, to, to let me know if, if you have also have had any dreams that have significance to you, especially if they've, they've come true or feel like they're coming true soon or there's something about them that you want to talk about. Feel free to drop a comment and to share the video and, and to get people to, to open up their minds to the possibilities because I don't know if there's a deity. But I do know that the fact that I've had dreams that have come true in my own life to me says that there's something more to all of this universe, that there's something more to the space-time continuum than meets the eye. So if you've got some comments about this or any dreams that you want to talk about, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you.